Now we're going to do the second set of right hand warm ups and before we go into the first lessons in the Frederick Note book. Um, now these are still just the first three open strings and with the first sheet you should have gotten acquainted with reading E which is the open first string at the top space of the music staff and then B is where the black note of the quarter notes are on the center line of the treble clef music staff and then G where the black note head is the second line from the bottom of the staff. Now make sure that you know if you've never read music you have to understand this the the clef the music clef that we're reading is a standard music clef for all instruments and uh, you don't want to think of the lines on the staff like the strings of the guitar that will mess you up because that the lines have nothing to do with strings of the guitar even though the B string is a, on a line and the G string is on a line uh, that can confuse you if you're thinking that st suddenly start thinking the lines are strings of the guitar they're not so I'm just saying that because I, I've taught this for 30 years and I've had people um, have misunderstandings and then they practice all week thinking this kind of thing and 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 then when I tell them that oh oh gosh you know and, you know I was thinking that they were the strings of the guitar but now in a, a, a different kind of notation called tab or tablature in rock they just call it tab but it, it goes back to early Renaissance period for the lutes. They uh, wrote things in tablature where you were reading strings and frets and you might be reading you know like the top line might be the first string and uh, O is open, one is the first fret, three is the third fret. So it just shows you you're just really reading the strings and the fret numbers. But in this uh, classical method we are reading standard music notation and it's not tablature. Okay, so just wanted to get that out of the way. So the, the uh, first warm-ups are really, um, they're fun to play. I'm going to play each one of them twice and then end it. The repeat sign, which you'll see like, um, like the last two measures, you'll see a repeat sign on the third measure from the end and that means that you go all the way back to repeat and then the last two measures are the ending. So we're going to go through exercise number one. Make sure when you, another pitfall that you want to watch out for is when you're changing strings. You're going M, I with the rest stroke and you don't want to just drag I through the next string. Like going M, I, I, M when you change strings. You want to go M, I, M, I. So make sure you alternate strictly. Um, sometimes we just sort of fall into what the hand wants to do and you have to remember your hand uh, even though it's very complicated, has a lot of complexity to it, it there's no brain in your hand so <laughs> it will lead you down a wrong path if you're not careful. Don't let your hand lead you the wrong way and in, into the wrong path. But uh, we want to make sure that we alternate. And changing strings is one of the challenges of these exercises as a beginner. So we're going to try them together. We're going to go through it slowly. And I'm just going to do one speed. You know, in the Frederick Node book exercises, I'll do a slow version and then a faster version. This is just going to be slow because it's a warm-up. When you warm up, you don't go fast. You warm up slowly, okay? So it's uh, middle, index, middle, index. And I should mention one finger is resting on the next string while the other is poised and ready to play. And then it's an immediate exchange of fingers. You don't want to play a finger and then lift the other and then play it and then lift the other. 
you want an immediate switching of the fingers. Okay? Make sure you're playing diagonally, that you're using the left side of your fingertip and stroking the string. It's like petting your cat, right? So you're stroking the string, but you don't want to rake the hand. Uh, keep the hand steady, dig into the string, push into it, and then pluck, and then the next finger. So they will be going like this, the fingers. Um, you might think that one finger will bump into the other one. Don't worry about that at all. Don't worry, you know, don't worry about the wrong things. You know, if that, I've never seen a student have that problem, so I don't think you're going to run into that problem. And you might be worried about the finger hitting on the way back. Now, um, I don't think that's going to happen. Just don't worry about it. It's an immediate exchange of fingers. It's like walking, and you want to play as if you're tapping about that loud. You don't want to play too timidly or too soft. Uh, with these exercises, the warm-ups are slow, but they're also very deliberate, meaning that we're really, it's sort of like tromping through high grass, you know? You're very deliberate with your footsteps. Here you're gonna be very deliberate and play loud, you know, play strong. You know, play like you want to wake up your next door neighbor, you know, even though, <laughs> I, I, I don't think, you know, if you have somebody sleeping in the same room, like a dorm roommate, you might wake them up, but uh, uh, I don't think you'll wake up the next door neighbor or even somebody in the next room. But, <laughs> so we're gonna try it together, slowly, finally. Okay, ready, one, two, ready, play with me. M, I, M, Next string, B string. Going to the G string. And it continues to the next line on the G string. And then the B string again. back to the first string at the top of the page and repeat the whole exercise. Really exciting stuff, isn't it? And then back to the B string. If you're thinking about everything, there is a lot to think about. Alternating the fingers, hitting the right string. Now end it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I forgot to mention on the ending measures, there's two quarter notes and a half note. When you see the hollow note head, that means that that note is going to ring for two beats, where all the quarter notes are one beat each. The half note rings for two beats, twice as long. And then the, the last, final measure, you have a whole note, and that rings, excuse me, rings for four beats. So again, that ending is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? Now, uh, that's important to know, to know the distinction and the proportion between quarter notes and half notes. And um, in the next exercise, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to do a variety of quarter notes and half notes. And actually, it's a repeated pattern of two quarter notes and a half note. Two quarter notes and a half note. And you count it like if you were tapping the rhythm, it would be tapped like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now that makes um, for an odd number of notes 
per measure. We're only hitting three notes, which is an odd number, right, per measure. And that means when you start with M, it's going to be M, I, M, and then the next measure is I, M, I, followed by M, I, M, and so forth. So um, let's try this one together with half notes, and it might help to count them out loud, count the beats. If you're not used to the proportions of quarter notes and half notes, you have to make sure you don't rush the half notes. You don't want to go like one, two, three, one, two, three. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? And beat four is just the same speed. You don't say it faster. You wouldn't want to go one, two, three, four, one, <laughs> two, three, four. I mean, I know we all know how to count to four, and you could easily rush that just thinking about it in your head. So, but you have to feel a rhythm. It's like a pulse, and sort of like feel it in your body. One, two, three, four. Okay? So, and don't worry about whether you have good rhythm or bad rhythm. That's, you know, it's something you could worry about all day long and you never touch the guitar. <laughs> so uh, we, we won't worry about that. I don't make those judgments and some people have better rhythm than others. And, you know, it's, but it's basically feeling a pulse and keeping it steady. And sometimes the things that throw off our rhythm are the physical things like changing strings and things like that. You know, like on the first exercise, just to review that, you were doing all quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One big mistake that a lot of people do is they'll do four notes really fast and then have a big pause in between the measures. Like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You don't want to do that. You want to uh, go into the next measure you have bar lines separating the measures, but they are not stopping places. Um, you have to make sure that you think of them as measuring places, and we call them measures, but it's like, you know, it's like fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer. It's a cycle of beats, but you don't go through fall, winter, spring, summer, stop, fall, winter, spring, <laughs> you know, it's not like you stop and start. It'd be like somebody running and stopping or a car sputtering and going, bloop, bloop, bloop. you don't want that. You want an ongoing beat through the whole piece of music. So finally, number two, we're going to do it together. One, two, ready, go. M, I, M. Next string, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the B string. at the top of the exercise, two, three, four, B string, four, one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. going to end it and it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is preparing you for playing with a mixed rhythm of
quarter notes and the half notes. And um, if you're doing other notes with your left hand and changing notes, it could be kind of a trick, you know, to juggle all those things. But there are ways around that to work on each thing separately. Now, exercise number three on this page, we're doing a similar thing, except now it's sort of backwards. We're doing the half note first, and then on beats three and four, we're playing quarter notes. So just let's just dive into that. Try it with me. One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The next string. Next measure, two, three, four, one, two, three, four on the G string, two, three, four, B string, two, three, four, one, two, three, go ahead and repeat back to the beginning. play any faster than you could nod your head. Two, three. Feel the pulse of the beats. Rhythm is a big part of what we're doing. And then the ending, one, two, three, four, whole note, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I repeated each exercise twice through. You could repeat it three times through when you're practicing. Um, it's so much fun and exciting, I know. But, <laughs> you know, you got to go through some of this boring stuff, you know, before we get to the fun stuff. But uh, um, you have to pay your dues a little bit. You know, it's we have to use a little discipline, but it's not too bad, really. It's not... I'm not asking you to shave your head and practice 18 hours a day, you know. But uh, um, what I was going to say is that um, in if you're taking private lessons with me, uh, normally these exercises, I would just have you do it once without a repeat. But when you're practicing on your own, you should repeat exercises two or three times. Um, time yourself and you might realize that it's not that many minutes really it doesn't take that long to go through an exercise twice there's three exercises on this page and they're all very important and it's important to be able to count the rhythm maybe because you're just hitting an open string count try counting the rhythms out loud and get used to counting because it's very important to be able to count um, the more ways you know something, the better you know it. I mean, I could just show you something and you could imitate me like a monkey, but, you know, if you don't know how to count it, if you don't, if you can't take the page home and figure it out how to play it yourself by knowing how to read the music, then you're really missing a big part of learning music. So we're, we're trying to be, you know, um, we're trying to, to learn to read as well as play. And, you know, the fun stuff is to be able to play, you know, a great piece of music, but um, you have to always do some warm up. So make this definitely a big part of your daily warming up. The uh, first um, open string exercises where, or the first right hand warm ups, sorry, when we were doing middle finger four times and index, um, after a while you could let those go if you wanted to, but these open string warm-ups going through with just quarter notes and then two quarter notes and a half note and doing these different rhythmic units, um, it's very important. And it's important just to warm up one hand, your right hand, um, to start off your day. Don't just jump into the hardest thing that you're trying to do. 
Okay, so have fun with these. And uh, again, you could be drinking coffee while you're playing these exercises. You know, just in the morning when you wake up, just pick up the guitar. That's half the battle is picking up the guitar. <laughs> Don't leave it in its case. Pick it up and play it. Okay. Subscribe John Hedger Guitar Studio and like my Facebook page. Thank you.